everyone, welcome back to Actual English with me, Jennifer Clyde. It's now time for lesson 24, and let's talk about certain checkups. Annual checkups, they're also called physical or even health checkups. We normally or regularly go to the hospital to have our body checked out, right? To see if there are any diseases or any cancer tissues growing here and there, just to make sure that we are in good health. And if by any chance there seems to be something wrong with us, they will discover it and there's something we can do about it to treat it. So the sooner the better, right? So that is our topic for today. Now, when was the last time you went to the doctor or to the hospital uh, to get a physical or a health checkup? I've been meaning to for the longest time, but to be honest, um, I'm too scared to go. Oh, I know it's a terrible excuse, but I will make it a rule to go very soon. So for those of you out there that have uh, used the same excuse as me, have not been going to the hospital for a checkup because you're just scared, make sure you to go and uh, make sure you go very, very soon. All right, anyhow, today's topic is health checkup, physical checkup. So let's get straight to it. I was just wondering whether you go to see the doctor often. You know, I actually do, because I think it's really important for women especially to go and get their annual checkups, uh -huh. like searching for cervical cancer or breast cancer, yeah. and just the general things like uh, your blood pressure not being too high and your cholesterol not being too high. So <laughs> I'm a big advocate for getting those annual checkups, especially sure. for women. Yeah. But, you know, I heard it's not as important for men, but are you pretty good? Are you diligent about getting your annual checkups? I think I'm the exception rather than the rule. <laughs> like many men just don't even worry about their yeah. health. They never go to the doctors or, or anything like that. Or they're scared to go to the doctors. Yeah, I think so as well. But I am a firm believer that prevention is better than cure. You know, oh, if definitely. you catch something early, then it's easy to treat. Right. Whereas if you leave it too late, you know, there's not much you can do about certain like diseases and cancers. Right. So do you usually go and have like the basic checkup or is it more extensive, like from head to toe, really looking <laughs> internally and stuff like that? I'd say the second one, yeah. It's okay. like really thorough. Every year I have like this full body checkup. Wow. Checks all the nooks and crannies, gets everywhere. And it's really reassuring when you get the results and it says everything's fine. That's true. You know, you are fretting and worrying for a couple of weeks while you wait for the results. Right. But I think it's always best to find out. You know? Yeah, I agree. Do you have to do any kind of special preparations for those kind of exams? Sure. Sometimes there's an endoscopy, and that means you have to fast for eight hours, I think, beforehand. Oh, okay. And then other times when it's a uh, camera in the other end, then you, <laughs> have to, uh, you have to take the special medicine, which flushes out your right. system. Right. So that's really hard to take. Oh, you know, I see. It's not fun. You drink liters and liters of it. Have you um, ever done that? I've never done that. Maybe I should do that, huh? Yeah. I think when you get to around 30, that's the time you should start at least doing okay. that, once every five years or so. I see. Okay, I'll have to look into that a little bit later. Yeah. One last question. Have you ever taken an MRI or CAT scan? Uh, I think I've had both, and I had to take oh. some weird like medicine that showed up on the scans. Oh, okay. But that was not fun either. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. So today Peter and Rachel were talking about going to the hospital for checkups. Now Rachel sounds as if she goes annually because she mentioned that she goes for annual checkups, right? She even mentioned that it's probably a bit more important for women to go, especially to get certain areas of their bodies checked out in detail compared to men in general. Uh, Peter, he's more like a female, I guess, because it is true, as they mentioned, a lot of men or guys tend to say, ah, I don't want to go, I don't need to go for a physical or a health checkup, either because they're scared or they're too lazy, I don't know what the reason may be, um, but definitely Peter is none of them. He makes it a rule to go to the hospital to get his health checked out on a regular basis. Let's see what they said line by line. Now, Peter says, I was just wondering whether you go to see the doctor often. Now, go to see the doctor basically means go to the hospital. Now, Rachel says, actually, or I actually do. She's stressing that she does go to the hospital or go to see the doctor. Why? Because I think it's really important 
for women especially, she says. And then she says to get their annual checkups. Uh, and she gives some examples as to what kind of tests and exams, um, examinations, they need to go through when they go to the hospital. Of course, you can search for certain cancers, search for certain problems when you go for a health checkup. But she said cervical cancer. Now, cervical, it, this may actually have more than one definition. In most cases, if you say cervical, a lot of people may think of the neck. It's more of a formal term, I guess, for the neck. But cervix or cervical uh, also pertains to the uterus. So perhaps the neck of the uterus as well. So women, yes, you should always go to check for cervical cancer. That's what I do on a regular basis too. Or breast cancer as well. And checking your blood pressure and your cholesterol level. Mm. These are the basic tests that people go to the hospital, right? So we all get these things checked out. And she says, but I heard, hmm, it is not as important for men. She says, but are you diligent? Hmm. Diligent basically means hard working, but she's saying, do you make it a rule? Is it a must for you um, to go to the hospital? Are you diligent about getting your annual checkups? And then Peter says, I think I'm the exception rather than the rule. So let me make this clear to you just in case you're a bit confused. Remember, Rachel says, I heard that most men don't go as often as women do. It is not as important for men compared to women. So he's saying, well, I'm not considered as one of those men. I'm an exception. I'm not like them. He says, I'm the exception rather than the rule. Okay. And he says, many men just don't worry about their health. They never go to the doctors or anything. Yeah. So we're just talking about men in general, or I guess I don't know exactly how many men go for their annual checkups, and I don't know how many men don't go, but this is just their opinion. So keep that in mind, okay? This is not based on a fact. It's their opinion, Rachel and Peter's opinion. So Peter's saying, I think that a lot of men just don't worry about their health, and they don't go to see the doctor or go to the doctors. And then Rachel says, or they are scared to go to the doctors. Now notice here, doctors, I did mention, go to the doctors means to go to the hospital, the doctor's office, in other words. Okay, so keep that in mind. And then Peter says, yeah, I think so as well. And then he says, but I am a firm believer, a strong believer that prevention is better than cure. That's right. This is an idiomatic expression. So prevention is better than cure is very similar to it's better safe than sorry, which means what? It's better to go just in case, you know, you may be in good health, but it won't hurt to go to the hospital. So prevention is better than cure. It's better to go sooner than to go late and have to get treatment for something. And then he explains, okay, to make it easier for you to understand. He says, if you catch something, if you catch something does not mean to catch something with your hands in, the, in this case, it means to catch an illness, get sick for example. Early, the point is, if you catch something early or if you discover that you have an illness early, then it's easy or rather easier to treat or to cure it or to get treatment for. Otherwise, if you leave it, ignore it, and it's too late, okay, then there is not much you can do about certain diseases and cancers. So he is just explaining in easier words, prevention is better than cure. He's giving examples. Once again, if you catch something early, if you discover that you perhaps have something growing in your body and you're sick, then it's easier to treat the sooner the better, right? But otherwise, if you leave it, 
if you wait and you go you don't go for these annual checkups because of whatever reason and if it's too late well there is not much you can do uh, about certain diseases and cancers in terms of curing it or treating it all right so rachel says so do you usually go and have or get the basic checkup or is it more extensive and then she gives an example like from head to toe, really looking internally and stuff like that. So a basic checkup is a very simple checkup, for example. You can go in and just get certain tests, whereas a more intensive or extensive checkup is a, an exam or a test from head to toe, right? You're checking all the details of your body. So that's what she meant by extensive. Now, Peter said what? He said, I'd say the second one. So he's saying, I usually go for the more extensive checkups, not just the basics, uh, basic checkups. Every year I have or I get this full body checkup, full meaning complete body checkup to check all the nooks and crannies. Now, this is an expression you might hear here and there, the nooks and crannies, nooks and crannies. So nooks and crannies, it means like, every part of a location or every little detail of a place. So nooks and crannies. And he says, it's really reassuring, hmm. reassuring when I get the result and it says that everything is fine. So reassuring and fine. Let's say, for example, you go to the hospital and get your body checked out or you get an annual checkup and they say, oh, no worries. You can go home you are fine, there is nothing wrong with you, you are in good health, then it's very reassuring, which means you are free of worries, okay? You feel very happy and you have no worries, nothing to worry about. So he's saying that it's nice to have that feeling, to feel that feeling and to know that you are good, you are fine. You are fretting and worrying for a couple of weeks. When? While you wait for the results. But I think it's always best to find out, okay? Now here we have fretting and worrying. Fret, fret, worry, worry. They pretty much mean the same thing. Fret about something means to worry about something. And you all know the definition of worry, right? So it says you're fretting and worrying. You're constantly thinking about something for a couple of weeks while you wait for the test results. And he says, but it's okay. Although you worry for a short period of time, it's good because yes, it's always best to find out whether you're in good health or bad health. There's always something you can do. Now, Rachel says, yeah, I agree. Are there any kinds of special preparations? Now, this part I added to help you understand the question a bit easily. She says, are there any kinds of special preparations for those kinds of exams or examinations? Would be right, or tests? He says, sure, sometimes there is an endoscopy and that means you have to fast for eight hours beforehand. So let's take a look at what Peter said. Hmm. Now, Rachel is asking about any kind of special preparations, right? And he says there are special preparations. There is something called an endoscopy, endoscopy. So basically, you know, uh, for those of you that have been to the hospital, there are certain tests and to check your stomach, for example, what do they do? They give you some kind of medicine to help you sleep for a while sometimes, or some kind of uh, anesthetic, right? So it numbs certain parts of your body. They put a tube into your body to check your internal organs. And that is an endoscopy, endoscopy, okay? And also there's something called a gastroscopy. These words are difficult to pronounce. This is endoscopy, okay? And gastroscopy is a very similar thing. Gastro, means stomach. So we, they, she, gong, if you want to be specific about that, you can say, I got a gastroscopy. Gastro, stomach, gastroscopy. Okay, anyhow, he's talking about this kind of test. And he says, if you get this, you have to fast for eight hours. Now, this fast here does not mean speedy, quick. 
No, it means something else. Fast here means to starve. It means to not eat. You have to go on an empty stomach, okay? And he says, and other times, okay, when it's a camera in the other end. This is just a fun way of saying this. Now, endoscopy, these tests, remember I said they put a tube normally down your throat, but he's saying other times when it's a camera in the other end. In the other end, meaning in the opposite end, right, the other way, okay? So when they check your intestines, it's the other way and not down here. He said, you have to take the special medicine which flushes out your system. Flush out, we flush the toilet to let the water flush down, to go down. So flush out one's system basically means to clean or cleanse or clear one's system, meaning your internal organs, your stomach, for example. So flush out your system means to clear out your stomach or intestines. You drink liters and liters of it, it meaning the medicine. And then he says, have you ever done that? Now, Rachel says, I've never done that. Well, Peter talks about his experience. He says, when you get to around 30. Now, the you here is just people in general. So when people get to or turn around 30 years of age, that's when you should start. Now, should start, start what? That's right. Start going to the hospital for annual checkups. Now, Rachel has one last question. She says, okay, one last question. Have you ever taken or gotten an MRI or CAT scan? Okay. Now, Peter says, I think I've had both. So he's talking about his experience. And then he says, I took some weird medicine that showed up in the scan. So he's talking about a certain exam or a test he had, and he says, well, I took some strange medicine. I took some weird medicine, and it showed up in the scan. So think of the scan meaning, that's right, like an x-ray, for example, like a scan. Show up means to appear. So it basically means it showed in the scans. I was able to see the results in the scan, okay? It was visible in the scan. And he says, but that was not fun either. Okay, and that pretty much ends our conversation for today's actual talk. Now, these two are talking about their experience of going to the hospital for annual checkups. So let's check it out one more time. I was just wondering whether you go to see the doctor often. You know, I actually do, because I think it's really important for women especially to go and get their annual checkups, uh -huh. like searching for cervical cancer or breast cancer, yeah. and just the general things like uh, your blood pressure not being too high and your cholesterol not being too high. So <laughs> I'm a big advocate for getting those annual checkups, especially sure. for women. Yeah. But, you know, I heard it's not as important for men, but are you pretty good? Are you diligent about getting your annual checkups? I think I'm the exception rather than the rule. <laughs> like many men just don't even worry about their yeah. health. They never go to the doctors or, or anything like that. Or they're scared to go to the doctors. Yeah, I think so as well. But I am a firm believer that prevention is better than cure. You know, oh, if definitely. you catch something early, then it's easy to treat. Right. Whereas if you leave it too late, you know, there's not much you can do about certain like diseases and cancers. Right. So do you usually go and have like the basic checkup or is it more extensive, like from head to toe, really looking <laughs> internally and stuff like that? I say the second one, yeah. Oh, it's oh, like good. really thorough. Every year I have like this full body checkup. Wow. Checks all the nooks and crannies, gets everywhere, and it's really reassuring when you get the results and it says everything's fine. That's true. You know, you are fretting and worrying for a couple of weeks while you wait for the results. Right. But I think it's always best to find out. You know? Yeah, I agree. Do you have to do any kind of special preparations for those kind of exams? Sure. Sometimes there's an endoscopy, and that means you have to fast for eight hours, I think, beforehand. Oh, okay. And then other times when it's a uh, camera in the other end, then you, <laughs> have to, uh, you have to take the special medicine, which flushes out your right. system. So that's really hard to take. Oh, you know, I see. It's not fun. You drink liters and liters of it. Have you I've, ever done that? I've never done that. Maybe I should do that, huh? Yeah. I think when you get to around 30, that's the time you should start, at least, doing okay. that once every five years or so. 
I see. Okay, I'll have to look into that a little bit later. Yeah. One last question. Have you ever taken an MRI or CAT scan? Uh, I think I've had both, and I had to take oh. some weird, like, medicine that showed up on the scans. Oh, okay. But that was not fun either. Yeah. <laughs> Now I've got five vocab words for you, so let's practice pronunciation first of all, and then get straight to the two patterns I have ready for you today. Now cervical, remember Rachel said that especially for women, it's important to go for these annual checkups uh, to check for cervical cancer, right? Now I did mention cervical could have two meanings, either the neck or it could mean the uterus, the neck of the uterus. So cervical, pronunciation, there's a stress right there on cervical, cervical. One more time, cervical, good job. And the next one, cholesterol, we all know what that is. We get our blood pressure checked and our cholesterol level checked. Now, just in case you have a hard time pronouncing this word, the stress goes right here on the second syllable, so it's cholesterol, 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 cholesterol. Okay, faster, cholesterol. And basic. The reason I included basic is because although it is a very easy word, um, I have noticed that many people, a number of people, actually pronounce that word as basic. Z. Z sound, that is incorrect. Try to pronounce it with a SS. S. S. A thick S sound. So it's basic. Basic. One more time. Basic. It's not basic. It's basic. All right. And nooks and crannies, remember I said in each and every corner, every place. Now, nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies. One more time. Nooks and crannies. And one final word, endoscopy. Hmm. You will make use of this word. Now, since we do talk about getting deishigyong in Korea so many times, try using endoscopy. I went to the hospital for an endoscopy, for example, okay? Now, pronunciation, stress goes right there on the second syllable. It's endoscopy, endoscopy. All right, okay, let's check out some patterns then. Fret about something or fret over something. Remember, fret means what? To worry, okay? Here are two sample sentences. You can tell someone, don't fret about being a few minutes late. For example, if somebody is late and is running around and complaining and looks so nervous, you can say, hey, don't fret about being a few minutes late. What about this one? You can also fret over something or someone. I'm not going to fret over Danny anymore. So let's say, for example, you were dating someone and you just broke up with Danny and you're constantly thinking about him you're so worried, you can say, you know what, I'm not going to bother anymore. I'm not going to fret over Danny anymore, okay? All right, one more pattern. Get or take an MRI, often used with or without scan. So here are two sentences. I got an MRI scan to help treat my back pain. Okay, and one more. I had to lie on a flatbed which was moved into a scanning tube to take an MRI, okay? Oftentimes when you go to the hospital for an MRI, they will make you lie down on a, a bed. Then that bed is called a flatbed. It moves in and out of the machine. So that's a flatbed, which was moved into a scanning tube. Okay, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Why? To take an MRI. Now also, notice, MRI, it starts with a consonant, right? But the M, when you pronounce the M, you pronounce it as M, M. It starts with a vowel sound, E, eh, E, eh, and that's why it should be on MRI, not a MRI. Okay, keep that in mind. All right, let's move on. Physical checkups. Oh, to be honest, I never really got that many done when I was young. I always just went when I was injured, when I fractured my chest, my back, my knees, my toes. But to be honest, I heard that you should go regularly because, you know, you don't know what's happening in your body sometimes. Sometimes you feel great, but there can be other things that's going on like cancer. Hopefully not cancer, but um, 
I haven't gone and got many physical checkups, but I heard they are quite cheap in Korea, so I think I should get one myself. I heard that once you get one, you can see what you need to work on. Maybe it's about getting your vitamin levels up. It's about um, you need to run more. You need to work and burn off some fat. I don't know. You get to find more about yourself, more than you would have known without it. So I think if you want to maintain a healthy lifestyle, you need to get a checkup quite regularly. I'm sure you have to go every year. I haven't. I haven't gone in 10 years, but I really should, and I should maintain my health. So today we are talking about going to the doctors or going to the hospital rather. Big hospitals are called general hospitals and doctors or doctor's office, they refer to smaller clinics just in case keep that in mind. So we're talking about getting physical or health checkups. Let's check out what David said. He said, I never got that many done. Okay, that many meaning I never got that many what? physical checkups or annual checkups done when I was young. He's talking about when he was young. And then moving on, he says, sometimes you feel great. Sometimes you feel healthy, in other words. But there can be, okay, there can be other things going on like cancer. Now, go on. Things that go on, it means things that happen. So he's talking about things that could happen inside your body, things that could go on inside your body, such as cancer. Since we can't see inside our body, he's saying you feel great on the outside, you may look okay on the outside, but inside you never know what's happening, okay? You never know what's going on. He's talking about how he hasn't gone in for an annual checkup for how long? For 10 years. I haven't, I have not gone in in meaning right here to the doctor's office or to the hospital, I haven't gone in 10 years, but I really should, meaning I really should go. So he's saying, I really haven't gone. I haven't gone in about 10 years, but it's about time I did go because he did mention that it's important to go on a yearly or annual basis. So let's check it out one more time, everyone. Physical checkups. Ooh, to be honest, I never really got that many done when I was young. I always just went when I was injured, when I fractured my chest, my back, my knees, my toes. But to be honest, I heard that you should go regularly because you know, you don't know what's happening in your body sometimes. Sometimes you feel great, but there can be other things that's going on like cancer. Hopefully not cancer, but um, I haven't gone and got many physical checkups, but I heard they are quite cheap in Korea, so I think I should get one myself. I heard that once you get one, you can see what you need to work on. Maybe it's about getting your vitamin levels up. It's about um, you need to run more. You need to work and burn off some fat. I don't know. You get to find more about yourself, more than you would have known without it. So I think if you want to maintain a healthy lifestyle, you need to get a checkup quite regularly. I'm sure you have to go every year. I haven't. I haven't gone in 10 years, but I really should, and I should maintain my health. Well, that brings us to an end to today's lesson, everyone. Hope you learned a lot. And of course, even better, I hope you had lots of fun. So these checkups, they should be done on a yearly basis or annually. So please do keep that in mind. And if you have been postponing it like me, yeah, try to go as soon as possible. Just to be safe, right? Prevention is better than cure. That's what people say. Okay, our next topic is eye and dental checkups. We often go to have our eyes checked and even go to the dentist to get our teeth checked as well. We'll talk about those two things. Uh, in the meantime, come visit us at our homepage. Find your way over to www.ebse.co.kr and simply look for Actual English with me, Jennifer Clyde. Okay, time is up everyone. Have a great day and I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.